I shot him six times. What's going on, horror fanatics? Welcome to I Shot Him Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. As you know, I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. If you have not done so already, please shoot this video a like. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm a ton. As well as if you're a new viewer to this channel, please shoot that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you get all the latest content updates to the channel. I will warn you ahead of time if you have not watched Scream 6 or have not been keeping up with the spoilers, or both for that matter, then this video may not be for you, as this does contain spoilers for Scream 6. Okay everyone, so let's get into it. So if you've been keeping up with my videos here on the channel, do you know, know that one of my post Scream 6, you know, after, ever since the movie release, one of my post Scream 6 um, videos I did was about Quinn Bailey not being the one to stab Gail Weathers, as you can see in this um, overlay here and I will leave that video at the end screen of this video so those new viewers who have not seen this video definitely check it out hit the comment section and let me know what you guys think but I talked about you know this theory of mine that I don't believe that it was Quinn as the one who stabbed Gail in that scene in Scream 6 as Radio Silence likes us to believe I also pointed out some massive Stumacher Easter eggs in this video and you can consider this video that we're talking on right now as part two as to why Quinn Bailey is not the one to stab Gail Weathers. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it as in my opinion, I definitely believe I kind of have unlocked a little bit more clues in the, within this scene that may point to Stu Mocker being the one who did attack Gail Weathers and not Quinn Bailey. Okay everyone, so we're obviously going to start off with Quinn. And if you watch my previous video talking about this, then you guys know for a fact that I don't believe it's physically possible for Quinn to be the one to pick up Gail's boyfriend and throw him through the bookcase. And after re-watching the film, I'm going to share two instances with you to where I can believe you can make that argument that this was not Quinn in this scene with Gail Weathers and her boyfriend. Instance number one is the hallway scene which, um, with Tara and Chad where they're having their moment and Ghostface creeps up behind Tara, stabs her in the back. Chad briefly tussles with this ghost face and easily overpowers them. This is Quinn in that scene because if you zoom in on the mask, it is the same exact mask that she is wearing in the final act of the film where she reveals herself to be alive and apparently wearing Sue Mocker's mask. Now, why I bring this up is because Radio Silence wants us to believe that she was strong enough to pick Brooks up and throw him through that bookcase all by herself. But yet, in this instance and in this scene with Chad, you can clearly see she is struggling with the power and the size of Chad. And the reason why I bring that up is because Chad and Brooks are both fairly muscular, around the same build in my opinion. I want to say anywhere between 180 and, 120, and 180 and 225 pounds. If Quinn was strong enough to just so effortlessly toss Brooks' body, lifeless body at that, we're going to talk about that through that bookcase then she should have put up a way better fight strength wise than she did with chad in my opinion something to think about but what is even more important to think about in my opinion is the fact of brooks lifeless body before he even got tossed through that bookcase you got to keep in mind he had a throat slash and he got carved up in the stomach and if you zoom in on his lifeless carcass sitting on the laying on the floor you can see that he has knife wounds in his gut if you didn't see that before but why that is important is because is be, for the simple fact is at that point before he gets thrown through the bookcase he would have been dead weight he would have been even weighing more ha than he would have had he been alive and she tried to he-man him and throw him through that bookcase while he was up incapacitated you weigh a lot more when you are incapacitated, whether you're dead or you're just knocked out. This is why when paramedics come to retrieve the body, they need more than one person to help pick them up and help pick the person up and put them on a gurney. Now, I know there are some fans out there that believe there could potentially be two killers in this scene. And I will say this, that does make a lot more sense, especially with the whole you know brooks being dead weight and being way more difficult to move by any one person than quinn doing this or someone of quinn stature whether it be male or female 
doing it by themselves. Before I move on to more clues that point to Stu Mocker being the one involved in Gail Weathers' attack scene, I do want to point out that someone of Stu's stature and physicality, somebody who's 6'4", maybe a little over 200 pounds, might have just enough strength to pull that off with Brooks even being at dead weight. And I give that person a greater chance at that stature than I do give someone at Quinn's stature, whether they be male or female, a chance to pull that off. Not trying to sound sexist or trying to trash the smaller you know, person, not trying to be rude or, you know, in that way at all. I'm just saying, like, it, in my opinion, it's just physically impossible for somebody who's about 130 to 150 pounds to pick up a physical trainer who's a physical specimen and add his dead weight by themselves like that. I, I'm just not believing it. But okay, everyone, so now let's move on to more clues that point to Stu Mocker being the one involved in Gail Weathers' attack scene. Now, I'm going to play this audio from when Gail and, Ga and Ghostface are having a conversation, and then I'm going to chime back in with my thoughts on the clues that point to Stu Mocker being the one that Gail Weathers is talking to. You're like the 10th guy to try this, right? A spoiler alert, it never works out for the dipshit in a mask. Oh, but they certainly leave a mark before they go, don't they? Richie and Amber managed to butcher Dewey, carve him up like a Christmas goose. Oh. How does it feel to lose the only man who ever loved you? Fuck you! How does it feel to know that you weren't there for him at the end? <laughs> Not there to give him comfort as he died screaming in his own gut. You're the one who's gonna die screaming. Okay, everyone, so before we get into the details of the dialogue, I do want to give a shout out to Sister Pam and her YouTube channel. I will leave her at in the description so you guys can go check her out. You know, show some love and support to her channel. She has a Stu Mocker Theory video out there if you guys have not checked it out. Definitely give it a watch. It is really, really good. Definitely made some really excellent points, even some points that I missed that we're actually going to touch on a couple of them here in this video so again just wanted to give sister pam a shout out guys show her some love show her some support if you're not subscribed to her channel already definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification icon so you guys can get updated to her content okay so let's move on to the first piece of dialogue here that pam actually pointed out in her video where we see gail weathers talking to ghostface and you hear gail weathers say the line you know you're like the 10th person to try this news flash or spoiler alert doesn't work well work out well for the dipshit in the mask when's the last time we heard gail weathers refer or call ghostface a dipshit for you. the reporter left for dead in the news van comes to stumbles on youtube dipshits as you can see this is the only time in the franchise where we ever hear gail weathers refer to ghostface as a dipshit is from Scream 1996 when she confronts both Billy and Stu in the final act of the film. Now, another piece of dialogue that caught my attention is when Ghostface says to Gail, you, you know, they sure do leave a mark when they go, don't they? Richie and Amber managed to butcher Dewey, carved him up like a Christmas goose. Well, when's the last time did you ever hear Christmas referred to in any dialogue in the Scream franchise? Are you kidding me? Look at this place. It's like Christmas. Again, a small clue, but I do find it really interesting how up until the sixth film, the only time we got a Christmas reference in any piece of dialogue was from Stu Mocker himself in that scene from the high school. Again, you may not see it as anything big, and it isn't nothing catastrophic. It isn't going to blow the door open and automatically prove that Stu Mocker is alive, but... In my opinion, this is a subtle clue that hints that this could be him on the phone with Gail Weathers. Now, another piece of dialogue that really stood out to me is when Ghostface says that Gail wasn't there while Dewey was there dying, screaming in his own gut. That part, screaming in his own gut. In my opinion, that sounds like a Ghostface who was there while Dewey was screaming in his own gut. And again, they referenced richie and amber as the one to butcher dewey but why i find that that piece of dialogue interesting as well is because radio silence 
went above and beyond to tell us the fans that Amber was the only one who killed Dewey Riley. It was nobody else. There was, you know, size does not matter when it comes to Ghostface, all that good stuff. But yet, they don't give Amber full credit for killing Dewey in this scene. Something to keep in mind. Now, another thing to touch on that Sister Pam actually did a YouTube short about was the fact that you did not see Stu Mocker's clothes from the final act of Scream 1996 in the Ghostface Tron. You did see his gown, but you did not see his his clothes, you know, the bloody clothes, you know, the stuff that he got electrocuted in, y'all. We did not see that. And when she mentioned that, when she did that short, I had to go back and rewatch the film and be like, holy shit, I didn't even think about that, about Stu Mocker's actual clothes outside of the gown not being in the shrine. Didn't just completely flew over my head. So again, to you, Pam, if you're watching this video, fantastic catch on that. Like, fan tremendous like and it's important because you see billy loomis's bloody shirt you see all this other stuff if Stu's gowns there why is not his clothes from that he supposedly died in why are they not there so again everyone i don't know if anybody else did maybe catch Stu mocker's official clothing you know the stuff that he supposedly died in if you guys did catch that, leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you guys did see it. I tried to go back in the film and see if I saw it. I did not see any of Stu Mocker's official like bloody clothing at all in that shrine. So again, this was a fantastic catch by Pam. And again, guys, this, in my opinion, these clues from Gail Weathers scene and stuff that Pam has obviously talked about in her video that I touched on here in this video... Again, guys, I definitely do think that Stu Mocker is not only alive and well, but he is the one who attacked Gail Weathers and is the one who killed Brooks and threw Brooks through the bookcase. But hey, that's just my opinion. Everybody else is entitled to their opinion. I'm sure there will be some of you out here who do not agree with this video and do not agree with the points that I made. And that's okay. We're not all meant to agree on everything. And that's the beauty of this community. We don't have to agree on everything. That's what makes these conversations so compelling. But okay, everyone, that is it for this video. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on what I discussed about here in the video. Do you guys believe it really was Quinn Bailey as the one who threw Brooks through that bookcase? Or are you in line with my line of thinking? And do you think it could have been somebody else? As well as let me know what you guys think about the details that I provided over these last two videos talking about this, do you believe that the clues in Gail Weathers' attack scene point to Stu Mocker being alive and the one who attacked her and killed her boyfriend as well as killed Dewey in Scream 5? Hit the comment section. You know I always love to engage with you guys. Talk Scream 6 and other horror movie content. Once again, this is I Shot Him Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. Thank you all for watching.